Hello, my name is Mike Roush. I had the opportunity, the fine opportunity back in the mid 70s to work here at the state park. And at that time, we had a lot of animals around. They have since been moved. We had elk, we had the bison. And at that time, we were gonna migrate the bison to the pens that they're in today. And to do that, we actually had to build them because they weren't there, it was just an empty field. So a group of us came together that worked here and actually built the pens that are there today. And we went around post by post, link by link, uh, put the posts up, put the fence in, and it was a hot, laborious job, but it was a good job and it was nice. And when that was all done, the buffalo were then migrated into those pens. And after that was done, we had to do other minor things at the park, repair the tower. We had to replace every step on the tower. There's a lot of steps on the tower. And, and we had to climb up, get underneath there, climb on the rails, replace the steps, and that was a lot of fun. My family has had a history here. My great uncle was the superintendent here. Uh, my grandfather and his family actually farmed this land before these trees were planted. And the CC Corps came in and they planted the trees as you see them today. And it's, it's, it's a nice park to come to. There was an animal display here that did have bears and a lot of other different animals. And one of the distinct memories that we had when we would come here to see those animals was the smell. <laughs> the smell was bad because you had a lot of confined animals in such a small place. And I was just a little kid and we used to come here when we first saw that, right? And so that really sticks with you. Hello, I'm Stan Geisel and we're out camping at the Wabash State Park and uh, grew up in this area. Matter of fact, our land is now property of the DNR State Park and remember many of the things that took place here at the State Park. The raising of pheasants uh, was nothing to see the ringneck pheasants walking along the road there where our house was. Uh, a lot of uh, pheasants were released. They hatched them, raised them here, and released them to the wild. And uh, we remember things that are long gone from the park. The animal cage where they had the native animals, bear, uh, there was a mountain lion in there, bobcats, quite a few uh, different animals. The area over here by the uh, park keeper's home that is uh, building this partial partially in the ground, about half of the building in the ground, was the hatchery <clears throat> where they would uh, incubate the eggs for the pheasants. They had a lot of pheasant cages. Uh, they used to have elk out here also in cages inside fenced areas. But a lot of that is uh, going away. Uh, back in that time there was no campground here, so this was all later, uh, probably late 60s, early 70s, when they developed the campground. and it's grown several times since then. Hi there, my name is Virginia Roush and I'm from this area, Wells and Adams County, all my life. Years ago, my father-in-law farmed this land that the park is now on. I actually had a great uncle by the name of Omer Nunswander who lived in the barracks on this land and helped to develop this park. And I remember as a child coming here and I could see these green barracks and all these people. And there used to be some playground equipment in that area, but nothing like it is today. And it was a great treat for us as children to come out here when we were little and come here for Sunday afternoons and for picnics. Later on, my husband's uncle, Toby Steffen, was the superintendent here of the park. And my husband worked for him for a while and he and his cousin, Toby's son, they would get the pheasants and they would load them in crates in the back of a van. They would take them to different state parks in Indiana, clear to southern Indiana. They would just haul these pheasants all around and sometimes the eggs too and then other places would take them. And it was just a real treat to have this area so close here. It's something that not very many people are fortunate to have in their areas so close as we do and I remember camping here not so much when our children were little but when we were older we would come here and camp because when I was little there was no campground and the trails and everything that they have developed now are just really amazing and I hope this park can continue to go on.
for many years to come. Hi, I'm Cindy Geisel, and I'd like to share some memories of this park. We used to come camping here with our children, and we would take them to the pool. They would love the water slide there and the diving boards. Our kids would practice on the diving boards because uh, and that's where they learned to dive and ended up on the swim team. So it was a great opportunity for them. And uh, they were really sad when they took it out, but hope maybe someday down the road they might incorporate something like a splash pad or something that other kids could make memories. The campground was great. They loved riding their bikes here and having campfires. And we would sing around the fire and play guitar. My husband would play guitar and we'd sing and have potluck groups here. So. It was just a great time. They loved racing up the tower, and uh, that was a fond memory, and going the trail around the bison. And uh, when they had an exercise trail here by the swimming pool, they would always see who could get it done in the fastest time. So there was just some great memories that we had here at the park.